Hello, Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your weekly spoiler-free guide to horror entertainment. I'm James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is review a horror movie from one of the various streaming services, spoiler-free, of course. Scream Stream is available wherever podcasts are served, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. If you want to hear the original run of Scream Stream, head over to patreon.com slash screamstream to hear those for free every week. Now, before I get into this week's show, I want to mention two things. Uh, first, from now on, Scream Stream will be released every Friday instead of Monday. I figured that's the best day since most people are looking for movies to watch on the weekend and looking for recommendations. So from now on, every Friday, you will have a Scream Stream. Hopefully I get this episode out on time on Friday. It's Friday afternoon right now. <laughs> I tried recording uh, yesterday and it just didn't sound good. So I'm recording this afternoon right after I got off work. So hopefully I can get it out on time. Uh, the second thing I want to mention was I wanted to let you know about my YouTube channel called The Dapper Geek. Uh, this is a vlog channel where I discuss all the things I'm into from comic books to beard care. If you're a multifaceted geek and you're into a lot of geeky things, Chances are there's something for you there. Uh, I'm also going to start doing uh, or posting non-horror movie reviews there as well. My goal is to have at least 100 subscribers by the end of April. So I encourage you to head over to youtube.com slash sbrjames or just search for The Dapper Geek and subscribe to the channel. I promise you won't be disappointed. Uh, right now I have some video game stuff up there. Uh, I am doing a review of some beard oil uh, this weekend. Probably going to record a couple other videos. So please head over there and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully you'll, uh, you'll like what I got to share with you. So on this week's episode, I'm reviewing the Bad Ben trilogy of films. They are available on Amazon Prime. And we're going to start with Bad Ben, then move into Steelmanville Road, and then finally Batter Ben. And here's, I think the the second one should have been like, the Bad Ben or Bad Ben colon Steelmanville Road because it was a little difficult to find. And uh, I talked to a couple other people and they were like, yeah, I, I don't, I couldn't find it. So I sent them a link so they could watch it. But yeah, it's a pain in the butt to find. So I will put links to all three films in the, in the uh, show notes. Uh, you can get the show notes over at screampod.com. Uh, so let's start with Bad Ben. This was written, directed, and stars Nigel Bach. So it's just, it's a, it's a one man show. Uh, there is one other character. I think he does voice. No, actually, you never hear his voice. The uh, security camera people or whatever. So, for a brief plot synopsis, Tom Raleigh thought he was getting the deal of a lifetime when he bought a house below market value at a sheriff's sale. He invested every penny he had with the plan of flipping the home for profit. Once he owned it, however, he noticed strange happenings all of which were captured on 21 surveillance cameras located throughout the home, inside and out. At first he thought people were breaking in, but he soon realized he was dealing with something paranormal. So let's get into the acting here. Acting right out of the way, this is going to be quick and painless because there's only one actor, and that's Nigel Bach. And I have to say, it, he did a really good job. I don't he doesn't have anything else on his IMDb page, so I don't know if he's done any acting before. Uh, but he was actually pretty good. He was a believable character. He seemed like he seemed to me what a typical typical New Jersey average man would be. And he cussed a lot, and he had this great accent. His accent reminded me—I don't know if you remember—the uh, commercials for Motel Six with Tom Bodette. That's who. That's who Nigel Bach reminds me of. Uh, but his his monologues were good. He talked to himself a lot, which kind of you. So you have to wonder when you first start to film, how is this going to work out? How are we going to get dialogue uh, from this guy? And is it going to be really awkward? And so the way we kick it off in the film, uh, we see him driving down the road and I, we're going to his his new house that he bought. And he has his phone, so he's kind of talking into his phone, almost kind of like he's vlogging. But we don't really know who his audience is. We don't know if he's going to upload this to YouTube or, or what's going to happen. So we just kind of see him vlogging. That kind of opens up his dialogue. 
And so we get to the house and he sees like all the cameras. And so then he calls the camera company and sees if he can get those turned on. So now we have extra cameras and that's how they kind of work everything in without having to uh, have him carry around cameras. Cause then that would be just kind of weird. We can follow him around the house now. And they were very careful in this film uh, to make sure that they had all their bases covered, none of the cameras moved ever, and there were never any extra camera shots that shouldn't have been there. And that's going to be important later on in the show. So once he's in the house and kind of comfortable and, and settled in, he talks to himself a lot. And that's not really unusual behavior, especially for somebody in, in his position where he's by himself most of the time, you're going to talk to yourself. That's just the way it is. I talk to myself all the time. Uh, so, uh, every, and everything just comes naturally. Just the moments when he talks to himself and when he, he talks out loud, they, it's, it's kind of like the dialogue has to be there, but they do it in a way that it just feels natural. So let's get to the story. The story was actually pretty interesting. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was a very simple story. It's a haunted house film, so you, you kind of know how it's going to go. Uh, but uh, there wasn't a whole lot of jump scares. There were a few like tense moments. But the way things unraveled and the way he kind of found clue upon clue as to what was happening was really interesting. And uh, he kind of figures out what's going on in the very middle of the film. I feel like, yeah, it's right around like the middle of the film or so. He finds out what's going on, but it doesn't really seem to bother him. He kind of embraces it, but he does so without caution, which was a big mistake because things got worse uh, and we kind of see him start to fall apart a little bit. And I don't want to spoil the rest of the film, uh, but I enjoyed the story. I thought it was pretty good. It was interesting. Again, it was a basic haunted house film. Uh, a lot of stuff happened, a lot of creepy stuff happened on camera. And you, I, I kind of watched the film and thought, how did they do that without sort of like, like how do they get some of these practical effects to work? Uh, and, and I thought that was pretty interesting. So overall, the film was good. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. I liked uh, Nigel Bach's character of Tom Riley. I thought he was interesting. I thought he was funny. There were some funny moments in it, uh, genuinely funny moments. So overall, good film. I would give this like a three and a half out of five. Uh, not a perfect film, very micro budget, but entertaining. So three and a half out of five. I uh, definitely recommend that you check it out. So let's move on to Steelmanville Road. Steelmanville Road. Uh, so this was also directed and written by Nigel Bach. Uh, this stars Jessica, pa uh, Jessica and Christopher Partridge, Ian Mullen, and Jean Sutton. And for the brief plot synopsis on this one, a prequel to Bad Ben found footage film style film explaining what happened to the home's previous owners. So acting in this one, uh, the acting from Jessica and Christopher Partridge was pretty good. There were some moments in there where I thought mm, they could have done a little bit better with with that particular dialogue. Uh, I think some of the dialogue in itself was could have been written better, but the acting I mean with what they they had to work with, uh, not too bad. But Gene Sutton, on the other hand, who played uh, uh, Mona, the medium, her acting had much to be desired. I'm sorry to say it. I've never really dissed anybody's acting on the show before. It was not good. Uh, it was actually pretty bad. I felt like this, this person had never acted in anything. I felt like she was overacting in some parts and, uh, not doing enough in other parts. Her, her, her acting was just kind of all over the place, all over the spectrum. I just didn't think it was very good at all. Uh, you can tell this was a very amateur actor, probably never done any other acting work before. Not good. 
the story for this one, I liked it. This one had a lot of potential. And I think if, if I would, if I was going to nominate a film for like a, a proper reboot or a proper remake, uh, with a, a, a nice budget, nice size budget, this would be the film. Cause I, I found the backstory of the house very interesting and they tied in local lore uh, in, in, a, in interesting ways into the main story of how or what Bad Ben was, how he became to be, or how he came to be. They did involve some local lore. Uh, some of the happenings in the house was pretty cool. Uh, they kind of tied in some more local family history into it. I mean, well, fictional family, but... Uh, sort of the family backstory was, was well-written just overall really interesting story. And I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised at that where it really fell short was the special effects or the visual effects. Uh, they were not good. <laughs> so they were like the lowest budget special effects. I believe I'd ever seen. Uh, I, I think Man, I I think if you had spent a little more time in like After Effects, you could have done something that looked pretty darn real. You know, there's a YouTube channel called Film Riot. I used to watch like all the time when I was when I was like hardcore making films, short films, uh, and uh, I would always watch like their After Effects tutorials and how they did visual effects and things. Uh, I feel like if they had spent some more time on that, like watching some more tutorials or something the visuals could have been better. Uh, I, yeah, but it's okay. I, I'm not going to hate on it too much for that because, you know, again, it's micro budget and you, he probably couldn't hire a really good visual effects artist. So he probably did what he could, uh, but still just not the greatest. Uh, oh, back to the story though. Uh, just, I want to touch on this one time, one, uh, just touch on a couple of things here. Uh, in the third act, everything kind of fell apart for me. Uh, the way they started to tie, the, tie stuff up and what happened to the characters at the end, I thought could have been written a little better. Uh, I, I thought it kind of got a little sloppy, uh, but still a decent story nonetheless. Uh, so let's move on to the camera angles here. Again, we're using the the security cameras, and we kind of find out why there are so many security cameras, uh, which kind of sets up the whole thing. Uh, and then we also have another camera that uh, Jessica would use to film with. Uh, she used her phone, and she was, again, sort of vlogging, but we don't really know what she was doing with the footage. We don't know if we, she was putting it up on YouTube or sending it to family members or what. But then her husband kept getting annoyed with her. Her husband in the or the the husband character was a real jerk in the film. Uh, I, I don't know why she was married to this guy. I did not like him from the very first scene I saw him. He's just a real douche. But anyway, uh, camera work, same setup. Uh, actually, it, I kind of watched all these back to back. The the camera setups were actually really well done. I don't think he even moved the cameras between filming. Um, so if he did, I couldn't tell. Nice work there. Nice way of integrating the security system into, into the films. Uh, so for this film overall, uh, this one was not as good as bad Ben and the acting had a lot to do with it. The acting and the visual effects really knocked off some points on this one. So for this film, I have to get a, a three out of five. Still not bad. The story saved it. The majority of the story saved it. Fell apart at the end, but that's okay. I do still recommend that you watch this one. Just was not as good. Uh, and then that brings us to Batter Ben, the final chapter. This is the last film in the series. Uh, again, written and directed by Nigel Bach. And this one stars Nigel Bach, uh, Jackie Baker, Matthew Schmid, and there was another character, but he was not listed. Uh, Dave, he was he was not listed on IMDb, so I don't know who played Dave. Uh, for a brief plot synopsis, Jackie, a psychic, Schmidty, a dyslexic cameraman, and D just dyslexic. Okay, and Dave, apparently producer and financier, 
uh, descend upon Tom Riley's abandoned house to learn what happened using all of their special skills. Here's where everything fell apart. So uh, acting, not good from anyone other than, man, I, I don't want to spoil it. The, the three new characters bet really just not bad acting, just all around bad acting. Uh, I don't know if it was the dialogue they were given or what, but just not, not good at all. I'm sorry. It, it just was not, uh, the way they, <laughs> man, the, so many technical issues with this. They started off with one camera they broke into the house. They got what was like a, another camera that was laying there on the, on, uh, on the, on the table. I don't know why they just got the one camera. Cause apparently there were, there were 21 other cameras around, but this one was the one that they had to get. And I guess it was the only one that they could find, even though they're on the wall. So they take this camera, they find some compelling footage on it to make them go back to the house. And so that's what they do. And they took, they took one camera back, a professional camera. Okay. That was all they were shooting with. And I really felt like there was another camera that they weren't really telling us about, but there, cause there were just some unusual angles that you could only get with, or that you, you couldn't get with just one camera. And then so halfway through the film, or maybe, I don't know, maybe like around the beginning, the beginning of the second act, somewhere around there, uh, they got the, the security cameras back on, which kind of surprised me. Uh, why would the security company just automatically just turn those back on? Really? I mean, they just, they, there was no phone calls like in the middle of the night, they just get turned back on. That's not going to happen because in the first film, Tom had to actually call the security company to have them reactivate the cameras in batter bin. They were just reactivated. Uh, in the very last scene, there was a camera angle. You could clearly see Schmitty holding the camera. And there were no other cameras around, but it was somehow there's a, there's a, another camera filming all or the, the entire group of paranormal investigators standing outside. Uh, who was holding that camera? Where did it come from? There's a lot of technical in, uh, inconsistencies that really bothered me. I feel like they, they slacked a lot on this movie. It's almost like, okay, let's just kind of do this one and we'll see how it goes. And, uh, we're just doing this cause we want, we just want to make another movie, not really caring much about consistency. And I, I, I felt, I don't know. I was annoyed by it. It, it really bugged me. That they just kind of got lazy. Again, there's only one, one actor who did a good job in the film. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Uh, Everybody else, not good. Uh, the dialogue was goofy. The Jackie who played the medium, her character was really underdeveloped. I, I th There were some character choices with her that I, I just really didn't agree with. Uh, she should have done things differently uh, in certain situations. Uh, her conjuring the spirit scene was laughable at best. I don't know if this was intentionally supposed to be bad or if they were trying really hard uh, and they just at, tried too hard. Uh, but this one was not good. This is just, I don't know if I would recommend this film. I, eh, cause I almost kind of want to tell you not to even worry about it, but then I want you to know what happened with the rest of the story. So I'm torn. I mean, I guess you could watch it if you want to. It's, it's, I mean, it's only like an hour and a half long or something like that. It felt like forever, though. I have to be honest. It felt like freaking forever. Uh, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I guess you can watch it if you want. Uh, my rating for this, though, is it's going to be a two. It's a two out of five. This is the lowest film I've ever rated on this show. Or the lowest rating I've ever given, given a film on, on Scream Stream. It, it's a two. A solid two out of five. It was just so bad. Uh, the story was, th this story also had potential. I think it, 
it really needs like a, a hardcore rewrite and some more money thrown at it, uh, better actors, and, and, and he could have something here. Uh, but as it is right now, it's just not good. It is not good. Uh, I, I, I think, yeah, I mean, there's potential for a remake. I would do a remake. Uh, Nigel, if you ever hear this, like, go to some investors and, and use this show as reference and say, hey, look, <laughs> James on ScreamStream says this has some real potential if you just throw some money at me so I can hire some really good actors and do a script rewrite and reshoot this thing. It could be really good. I wouldn't even, like, I would leave the security cameras out altogether. Like, that, like that's done. That's that's too played out. Get a review, a, a paranormal crew in there with their own cameras. So we get more of a claustrophobic feel. We're always right there with them. We're in the action. I think that's probably like, yeah, that's like the, the main issue here. We were, we were not in the action with the investigators like we should have been. We're always like waiting to see what's going to happen. Uh, I would have rather been right there with him. Uh, so, Nigel, man, get some more money, dude, and reshoot this film. Because, like I said, it has a lot of potential. And I would be excited to see one where we actually have more cameras held by the investigators uh, to kind of just get right in there. Uh, so, yeah, two out of five for this one. I'm sorry. Just not that good. Again, watch it at your own discretion. Be forewarned. You're going to be bored a little bit. But I kind of want you to know what, what happens. Uh, but yeah, Bad Band was good. I liked it. I was surprised. It was super interesting. And Nigel did a really good job playing Tom Riley. Uh, just this this everyday guy from Jersey who likes to cuss a lot. Ends up in a bad situation. Tries to make the most out of it. And it beats him down. I loved it. Uh, it was a great concept. Uh, Steelmanville Road. Not as good. Better story. So three out of five for that one. And then better Ben. Just, uh, it is what it is. Uh, so there you go. There's the whole uh, Bad Ben series. You'll find that on Amazon Prime. I will put links to all three of these films in the show notes. Uh, go and check them out. New releases. We have not much on Netflix. I don't think there was anything on Netflix that I saw uh, as far as horror-wise. Um, I was checking what's new on netflix.com slash USA. I didn't see anything on there. I'm taking one more quick look. Oh, the Titan. That looks interesting. It's a sci-fi. I guess it's more sci-fi thriller. Uh, that looks pretty cool. I might check that out. And I think that was like the only thing that I saw on, on Netflix that was uh, horror related. So on Amazon prime, we have a couple of things of interest that I do want to mention. Uh, the first of being uh, Static from 2012. I remember seeing the trailer for this and it looked super creepy. It stars uh, Sarah Paxton, Milo Ventimiglia, and Sarah Sahi. And Mili, uh, Milo, you'll know him from uh, Gimmore Girls and also This Is Us. Uh, this movie looked really good and I never did get to, ch get to see it and... I, I completely actually I completely forgot about the film until I saw the, the cover art on Amazon. I was like, hey, that looks familiar. And I watched the trailer. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I remember this movie. I got to see this. Uh, the Vampires remake from 2015. This is the uh, remake of the 70s film Vampires about lesbian vampires, I think. Uh, don't plan on watching that one. Uh, Bunny Man Massacre from 2014. This got a lot of hype on, on all the horror blogs. Uh, it looks silly, but it might be a lot of fun. Uh, Bedeviled from 2010. I remember seeing, I don't remember if it was a trailer I watched for this, but I think this is a Korean film, Korean horror film, and I remember it looking really good, and I never got around to watching it, so that is also in my watch list. And then I don't remember if I... Mentioned this last episode or not, but The Citadel from 2012, uh, Irish film. I think I did mention this. Uh, if if I did, that's okay. It deserves an, another mention. Watch that movie because it yeah, it's really good, and I highly recommend that one. Uh, I don't remember if I did a review of this uh, in the first run of Scream Stream, Scream, uh, Scream Stream 1.0. 
I guess that's what I'll call it. I don't remember if I did a review of that or not. Uh, I have to go back and look. But if I didn't, I will review this film. Uh, probably maybe in the next couple of weeks. I'll check it out. Uh, also, one thing that I keep forgetting to mention every week is uh, the TV series. I guess it's a, it's a collection of short films from this uh, uh, indie filmmaker. And it's called... From Beyond, he 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 added two new episodes. Uh, I talked about this a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, actually, uh, where he left off with a short film called Evil Rising Part One, and I was waiting for Part Two. Well, he he contacted me on Instagram, said, "Hey, I got two new episodes up." Uh, so I think also next week, along with the movie, uh, I did tell him that I would watch these and, and kind of do more of a, a comprehensive review. Uh, so I'll talk about these next week as well, along with uh, the usual film, which I don't know what it's going to be yet. But uh, if you want to keep up with me, uh, and I'll keep you posted on what I'm going to be reviewing next week, you can follow me on Twitter at James Gas. Uh, so, and then as for Shutter, I still haven't gotten my Shutter subscription back yet. I don't know if I'm going to. It it really depends on bills and and whatnot. Uh, but we have a few new things on Shutter. Uh, Dark Waters. I am not sure what that is. This is a film from 1993. Uh, I do not know what this is, but it's gotten some good reviews so far. Directed by Mariano Baino. I don't know. I don't know anything about this movie, but it's got good reviews. So maybe you should check it out if you have Shutter. Uh, then we also have. Uh, Behind the Mask, the Leslie, the rise of Le Leslie Vernon, really good mockumentary film about the birth of a serial killer, a masked serial killer. I think I reviewed this in 1.0. I don't know. I have to go back and look. But it, if you haven't seen this yet, th this is a, an absolute must watch. Such a good film. We also have a Shutter exclusive Mon 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 Monsters, which is a Japanese film. It looks bonkers as most. Japanese horror comedies do. We also have True Romance with Christian Slater. Never saw that movie. Uh, I don't know if why it's in on a horror site. Maybe because it's a thriller or whatever. Uh, never saw this one. Always meant to. Uh, maybe I'll check it out eventually. Maybe I can find it on Amazon. Uh, then we have Operation Avalanche. Uh, this is, I don't know what this is. Two young CIA agents uncover a shocking NASA secret and a major major government cover-up that puts their own lives at risk. Uh, stars Matt Johnson, Owen Williams, and Josh Bowles. Uh, also has some pretty good reviews, so that one might be worth checking out. And then we also have the Mothman Prophecies. This was the one with uh, Richard Gere. When did Richard Gere? Yeah, Richard Gere. This was a good movie. I used to own it on DVD, and I think I, I sold it in garage sale or something. Um, but this is one that has uh, Richard Gere, Laura Linney, David Eggenberg, and Deborah Messing. Uh, this was a really good film. I enjoyed it. Pretty thrilling. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out. I don't I don't know where else you could watch it. I mean, you probably rent it from a million other places. But yeah, it's it's totally worth the rental. So there you go. There are your new releases. Uh, for the week, as far as I can find, uh, if you have a site that you know of that keeps track or keeps really good uh, running tally of, of new releases for streaming services, please let me know um, so I can check it out and keep you better updated on what's new to stream. Um, so uh, news, not going to have any news this week because I spent so long reviewing three films and then trying to cover the new releases and stuff. So no news. And mostly, you know, it's, it's been slow news weeks here recently. Uh, I mean, other than still seeing stuff about Halloween, uh, they're in post-production now should be out in October of this year. Uh, I forgot what the exact date was, but I am looking forward to that. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of scream stream. Thank you so much for joining in and taking the time to listen. I appreciate it. I do want to give out, give a shout out to Mervin, uh, who listened to, uh, scream stream 1.0 uh, 
realized uh, last week or the week before uh, that I rebooted the show, and he's happy I'm back. And Mervin, I'm happy you're listening again. I do greatly appreciate that. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at screenpod.com where you can find links to all of my social, social profiles, subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher, and get the show notes for each episode. That is at screenpod.com. If you have a movie you'd like me to review, uh, please hit me up with your suggestions. You can post on the Facebook page, uh, hit me up on Twitter at James Gas, or you can send your suggestion to screamstreamcast at gmail.com or go to screenpod.com slash contact and fill out the little form. Uh, help me pick a movie uh, because it is difficult trying to go through this, the the sites and, and find something that I think you might enjoy or might make good for a good review. So if you have a recommendation, please, please, please let me know. That would help me out a lot too. Uh, remember to sc- subscribe to the show in Apple Podcast, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, all those places, uh, anywhere that you can find podcasts, subscribe to the show there. And then lastly, music for Scream Stream was created by Kevin McLeod over at Incompetech.com. Until next week, I'm James Gass saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. <laughs>